Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Donald Doherty uh, and uh, thanks for being here. I, I was planning to do this in a uh, webinar software, but um, I just had a few people reaching out to say that it would be more convenient on the Facebook page here. So hence I am here on the uh, Facebook page. Um, I had the randomness webinar earlier on today and uh, I'm running it here for you guys uh, right now. So um, the thing is, this is uh, going to take about 20 minutes, um, so I'm going to share with you guys just some kind of tips and hints and things that I've learned about uh, live streaming over the last you know, little while, and, um, and hopefully some of those uh, kind of tips are, are, are super useful for you guys or anybody that is working from home right now because of everything. Um, there's no pitch. There's nothing to pitch here. Um, I'm just here to give you guys some information to kind of help you all out. and. Uh, Hopefully that you find that this this really uh, improves what you're doing. Um, so to give you, I guess as I said, like three steps to make your live streaming better. And and because of the global pandemic pandemic right now, like a lot of us are actually working from home. And uh, potentially, if you're a wedding photographer, you may have or a portrait photographer or whatever kind, uh, you may find that a lot of your your bookings right now have, have kind of dried up for the next little while. So I want to just share with you guys, you know, why live streaming is, is such a, a great way to reach an audience, but also potentially is a good way to, to maybe bring you in some revenue and, and uh, in these coming months, whenever you guys are, are, are not going to have that going on. Now, um, if you can, um, in the, uh, in the uh, video here, you can actually, uh, let me just check that this is uh, set up right, because you should be able to leave a comment and I will be able to uh, bring a comment on screen. Uh, I'm going to chat to you about this uh, software that I'm actually using today as well as part of uh, uh, as part of what I'm doing today. Uh, let me just double check that uh, everything is set up here, guys. Right? By the way, not not a good way to start the stream, but uh, I had to actually restart this to get it uh, working properly today. But there we go. Okay. Um, let me see how I can uh, make sure that you guys can. Uh, comment on here because I really want you to be able to uh, uh, comment. But uh, anyway, if you're watching, um, just just leave me a little comment on the video. It's always uh, it's always awesome to have that. Um, and uh, I'll see if I can get your get your comments on screen at some point. Um, but yeah, as I said, um, we're going to talk about uh, three steps to make your live streams better, um, which is uh, kind of fun. Um, and so, as I mentioned, the pandemic means that more than ever, uh, quality live streaming is, is really uh, invaluable. Um, and uh, so a little bit about myself as well. I mean, many of you guys will actually know who I am right now, but uh, I'm a wedding photographer. I've been involved in uh, creating wedding films, and I, I run a, um, a photo booth business as well. Um, and uh, I'm a I was supposed to say I'm a baby. I've got a baby. I'm a dog daddy and I'm a husband uh, to my wife, Margaret. Uh, and I love coffee and travel. Don't we all, eh? Um, so uh, that's pretty much me. But just to give you a little bit of info on kind of the live streaming th side of things. Uh, I started Gage Live a number of years ago and uh, was involved with a, a company that we were working with to do our live streams. At that stage, they were basically filmed to a um, television quality uh, standard. Um, and since that, I've been involved in, in kind of live streaming education, and I've always been passionate about the the kind of live streaming model. I think it's it's fun. It's fun to be to fun to be live, isn't it? Um, I'll just show you guys what I what I meant there when I said. So we can bring the comments on screen here. It's kind of cool, Jillian Rob. Hello, hello, Jillian. Great to have you here. Um, and as I say, if you guys have any questions, throughout, just uh, just let me know. Um, so that's pretty much me, and so I have a bit of experience uh, over the last while doing uh, live streaming, and in fact. Um, just to say, the last 30 days, um, I've actually ran a book weddings challenge. So I've had um, quite a number of photographers in a private group, and I've done a, a live uh, a Facebook live every single day into the group. Um, and so it's been great because people can obviously in real time ask questions and have everything answered. And um, so I, I just love the medium uh, of live streaming. So uh, live streaming is sharing a video to a live audience via the internet. And just to give you guys a bit of an idea of how you, how the video market is predicted to grow, um, it was 30.29 billion in 2016, and it's pre predicted to go to 70.05 billion by 2021. And in fact, with that said, I think with this global pandemic that we were in the middle of, I think everybody is jumping onto Zoom, they're jumping onto live streaming technologies, they're understanding that this is potentially going to be the new norm whenever we come out of this um, 
uh, this situation. Um, and so I think we're going to see a lot more people working at home. We're going to see people uh, consuming content at home and used to interacting with people and uh, some of those things that perhaps before we needed to go and do, now we, we can actually do via the internet and people are, are kind of more aware of that. So it's never been a better time to be kind of up in your game when it comes to the, the live streaming side of things. So what's so great about live streaming is uh, real-time experience. Um, you, know, you guys saw that I brought on Jillian's comment from earlier on. Um, uh, and then also it's the uh, interaction. So you have like live interactions, like your audience can ask questions. Um, you know, they can steer the direction of what you're doing. So if some of you guys ask a question tonight, um, I will actually be able to answer that as we're on here and that will steer the direction of exactly what we're doing. And then of course, uh, cost reduction as well. So obviously, if all of you guys that are watching right now came to watch me deliver this presentation live, um, obviously you'd have to pay for flights, you'd have to pay for accommodation, you'd have to pay to be here, I'd have to set up everything, all of that sort of stuff. And the costs involved in that are, are kind of, are, are gonna be kind of expensive, right? But obviously I'm live here, I'm live in my home studio, uh, and this has cost me very, very little to, to be here to do this. And it's costing you guys, you know, nothing really to, be able to tune in today to be able to watch this uh, presentation. So obviously from a cost advantage, it's it's um, insanely good. Um, so that's that. Okay, so um, here's just some ideas for some things that you can use live streaming for. So Q and A's, live demos, share your experience, promote your content, live webinars and trainings, which I'm kind of like what I'm doing right now with you guys, and behind the scenes. Um, if any of you guys have, have thought about uh, getting into online education or um, you've been thinking about that for a little while, um, it's definitely worth investing this time. So obviously some of you guys will find, and myself included, that you have a lot of time in your hands right now. And so obviously I have a kid as well and some of you guys have kids and other things going on with family members and things to do that you have to uh, do. Um, but if you do find that you've got a lot of time, you know, potentially this could be a good time to create an online course. Um, uh, or to share your knowledge through Facebook Live to market your business as well. Because we do have this time and, you know, I'm still getting inquiries. People are out there still looking to book weddings. So it's, it's still a great opportunity uh, to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, so the first of my tips is the lighting and your setup. Now, um, I gotta say to you guys, today I was trying to set up my lighting for this evening. And for some reason, my webcam is not uh, playing ball. Very random lighting setup. I, I have a ring light set up to the side here, pointing to the roof, uh, which is which is not really uh, what I'm going to suggest. Um, but here's the thing, right? So the cool thing is with live streaming, it could be from your telephone. Like we could, every single one of us has a phone, and many of you guys will be watching this right now from from your phone. And so you can pick up this device right now, start live streaming, reaching your audience, um, and so that could be that could be yourself. And so first of all, one thing to say is it's better to be doing something to be doing nothing, right? But if you want to kind of up level and get better than using your phone and make your live streams a little bit more professional, um, you might want to think about um, enhancing that through like, you know, software and better cameras and better audio. And I'm going to ch chat to you a little bit about that today. So there's a wide range of, of potential um you know, live streaming options from the phone right up to having almost like a, a, a live kind of television environment. Now, it's important to, to realize that your computer matters. And so uh, obviously when you're live streaming and you're, you're sharing a live video via the internet, um, it takes a lot of processing power. So um, if your computer is slow, if you find and you do some test streams, and I'll talk about how to do that in a little while. If you do that and you find that your, your um, maybe your audio is lagging or you know, there's some other issues with your stream, it may well be your computer. And um, so it's important to make sure, number one, that your computer is fast enough, and number two, that you close all the other applications, that if there's anything like really heavy duty that you're able to close. Maybe some people out there might decide if they're gonna get big into live streaming, that uh, they maybe get a dedicated you know, PC or dedicated Mac to, to be able to uh, live stream from, but um, the computer does really matter. Um, the next thing that, that matters also is your internet speed. Um, and it's mostly the upload speed that you want to be looking at. Um, you want a minimum, I would recommend, of 10 megabyte per second upload. Um, you can do that through going to Speed Tester, I think it's Speed Test, any Speed Test, just Google Speed Test, and you can run a Speed Test to see how fast your, your connection is. And also, um, you're gonna to wanna to have that as a wired connection rather than running off your wireless because 
through, through wireless there's um, a little bit more latency um, your wireless can drop where if you have like a LAN like wired connection which basically to make to make that kind of easier you just get a cable you plug it into your computer and the other side will go into your router um, I have my office set up so that um, we've got plugs in the wall so we can just plug in there and that's that's linked up to the router um, and so if you can if you have the ability to have a, a wired connection you know, nine times out of ten, that's going to be way, way better than uh, than just going down the down the wireless route. And again, that's why whenever you're live streaming on your phone, um, sometimes if you're using the wireless, it can be a little bit kind of iffy. And let me tell you, believe me, right? We ran all of these classes on Engage. We had many, many problems with the internet, so I do know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been absolutely through it. Um, so next is looking at your camera. So uh, one thing to say, and I, I obviously admit it to you guys, I have a few camera issues tonight just trying to get the, the webcam set up. I couldn't work out exactly which was the right driver to, to download. But I would highly recommend um, the Logitech brand of um, web cameras. I've actually put a link, um, I think it's in the other post I put earlier on, which um, I'll, actually I'll do it in this one after as well. I'll link to my recommended gear list. Uh, but I have the 920E camera this is the Logitech Brio I think it's maybe a couple hundred pounds or between 100 and 200 pounds um, and and you know these cameras are going to much much improve the quality just to give you guys a bit of a, an idea of what I mean so this is what I'm currently getting from my uh, Logitech and like I say I had a problem with this uh, earlier on but here's what's coming off um, oh I just moved that over that's what's coming off my computer normally so you can see it's a lot uh, it's a lot greener um, and it's quite nice I think with the Logitech you know you get a kind of like a wider field of view uh, it just looks like really looks so much better um, this was recommended to me by uh, by Melissa Love and it's it's you know as she told me at the time that it was nicknamed the, the beauty cam because it makes everything look better it makes your skin look better so um, I would definitely highly recommend um, the, the Logitech cameras now you may decide that you want to take it a step further and obviously with the Logitech cameras it's a little bit hard to get um, you know the depth of field that you may want to have um, and obviously a lot of people that are watching this right now are photographers so you understand depth of field so probably don't need to explain that too much but obviously if you do want the depth of field a um, couple of different things first of all you want to be a little bit away from your camera and then you want to have a little bit of room behind you now I know that a lot of us that are working from home right now we, we are maybe in a spare room or perhaps you don't have you know loads and loads of room behind you but if you are looking for that look with, with everything kind of blowing out in the background um, you need to kind of get that, that sort of space um, now the software that I'm on at the moment is called Ecamm I'm going to talk more about that in a little, a little bit um, but with Ecamm you can actually get a Canon SLR Plug that in. I think like a lot of them are, are compatible. You can look up on, on their website. Um, and that you can actually use that to live stream. So that will definitely give you a better look than you're going to get with the, the Logitech camera. Um, if you're using a brand like Sony or one of the other brands, um, you can pick up, uh, I'm just going to see if I had it beside me, but uh, you can pick up like a little Blackmagic Studio um, converter that you connect to your camera. And that's a way you could use your, your Sony camera if you decide that, that that was the route you want to go down. Obviously, like I... I know that I could do that and I know it could look way better. The convenience of, of this camera I find is, is really, really good. Um, so I, I just stick to the webcam, but I think if you're looking to up level, um, I think it's not a bad idea to consider you know, potentially getting um, using your SLR as part of the setup. Now, uh, in terms of lighting, um, I, in my uh, home studio here, I have like really nice windows like uh, along the front and at the back. And I tend to use um, usually use window light. And I mentioned to you guys I was doing the 30-day book weddings challenge. And throughout the book weddings challenge, um, I, I was usually doing those around the morning. And the light was fairly consistent. Um, obviously, one thing to think about if you're doing it in front of a window, um, let's say it's an overcast day, and then the next day could be a sunny day. You know, your streams might look completely different. Um, so I definitely think if you can, it's a good advantage to have some sort of uh, a lighting setup. Um, and, and what I would recommend or what I've done in the past, which has worked really well, is to have a key light, uh, a fill light, um, potentially a hair light, and then a light uh, which lights up the background. Now, that may sound like overkill for you guys. Um, that may sound complete overkill for a lot of you guys. But even if you can start with like one light, like I'm just literally using this one light off the side today. Um, but if you, you, you could just even start with one light or two lights or however many lights you have, or you just use the window. So again, this is all about encouraging you guys to up level. So if you're currently doing 
you know something at the moment you perhaps want to move to that that kind of next level to uh, see how it goes a um, couple of comments on here Michael uh, Michael says even even Michael good to have you here awesome to have you here as always uh, and then Liam says uh, I tried the Canon R, but I think I need a converter. I have the Black Magic web presenter on the way. Okay, cool. I have that one as well. And do you know what, Liam? I actually bought that, and I've never used it. It's never been in the box because I just, I, I just, I never got around to it. You know, but um, that that is the way to make that work. And um, I, I'm sure the quality of your stream is going to look uh, look awesome if you're using uh, if you're using that. Um, and then Liam comes back and says, I tried it in the Canon R, but I think I need a converter. I think you kind of said that. Um, the high, oh, cool. The 30 day booking course is highly recommended. Yeah, I, I ran the booking course and a lot of these guys absolutely loved it, which is awesome. Liam and Michael, thanks thanks for being in that. Um, it's kind of a weird, a uh, little bit of a digression here, but it's kind of a weird time right now with marketing and things. So I was going to run that next week after Easter and I'm kind of holding off to see what, uh, what people want. But if you guys are interested in the book, Weddings Challenge, which is 30 days of live marketing challenges. Let me know, and uh, maybe we're going to run that again uh, closer uh, soon enough, you know. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's get rid of Michael's comment. Thanks, Michael. Okay, um, also, just think of your positioning in the in the frame, and that, that's really important as well. So um, let me just switch back here a little sec. So if you guys can see today, like I don't have a lot of headroom above me. So uh, one of the issues that you'll sort of find is sometimes whenever people are uh, live streaming with their, their MacBook uh, or laptop, um, the laptop is normally down a bit lower and it will be kind of looking up. So it will be almost getting, I'm gonna grab this to kind of show you guys, like it's almost kind of getting this kind of idea. So you have like loads of the, loads of the roof and a little bit of you at the bottom. And obviously that's not really the ideal scenario. Um, so there's a couple of different um, couple of different ways around that. Um, number one, if you wanna do the, the kind of DIY kind of way, um, you can go grab some books and you can raise your laptop up. So that's gonna be able to get that more kind of on level where I have it here. Um, or I invested in, because I used to use my laptop, so I invested in this little kind of uh, table tripod, which is from Newer, Newer, um, and uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I, I did, when I was using the laptop, I bought this, and it meant that the camera was a little bit higher up, and then this, the screen just looked a lot better. Um, now I'm using my iMac; it's just on top of, of the iMac here. Um, but yeah, so think of your position on the screen, and what you sort of find is talking head videos. You normally tend to be. Uh, in the middle of the video, so obviously us as a lot of photographers as I, I know we're here um, and, and normally we're doing like kind of rule of thirds and stuff like that, but typically for talking head videos you want to be in the middle, you don't want too much headroom and um, yeah, just, just be conscious of that as well. Um, yeah, okay, cool. And yeah, we missed tripod. Okay, cool. Second thing to think about is audio. Um, and this is, guys, this is a 20 minute live today and I don't know how long we're going for right now, but it's just a kind of quick fire round to give you guys some, some quick info you can implement. So in terms of mic choice, you've got a number of different um, ways in which you can uh, use the audio. So a shotgun mic, so again, um, the likes of Liam there that's going to be shooting with his, uh, his Canon R, you know, you can use shotgun mic. The only issue with shotgun mic is you're going to be pick, picking up a lot of ambient audio. Uh, a lapel mic, uh, which is the little sort of furry one that you tend to sort of see uh, people on TV th and things there. That's quite good for coming into the background. Um, obviously, just be careful, you know, with what you're wearing and things like that. Um, handheld mic, um, probably, I don't think many guys are going to use that unless you're outside. Uh, an XLR mic. So an XLR mic um, essentially is a, is a mic like this one that has this big kind of thick cable this one here so it's it's like this where it has the the big thick cable like this and an xlr mic um, gives really good quality uh this one is the sure it's one of the ones that you, it's one of the best ones that you kind of see around there um and then you also want to think about um by the way like how you um uh, how you you secure your mic so like this one is on an ore stand i'm gonna hold this up um so you guys can see there it's got like this big kind of foam thing at the bottom, right? It's got a really, really solid um, 
foam base. So if I'm hitting the table or you know something's happening on the table, I'm not going to be getting all of that noise. And I noticed that before when I used um, another mic that anytime I touched the table, there was a lot of noise. So if you do find that, you may want to invest in a boom arm. And so a boom arm can either connect to your desk and it can come out and you can uh, hang your mic on the boom. And that means that no matter what you're doing on your desk, that sound shouldn't translate to your mic. Um, and then also, you guys may want to think about investing in a pop shield. So this is, hopefully it's not popping too bad today, but um, you can see, I don't know if that's going to work. But um, that's pop shield, so you can put that in front of your mic to cut down a bit of that sort of breathy, uh, breathy breath uh, that's going on. Um, and that, that, again, is just going to raise the quality of, uh, of your audio. Now, one thing to think about, if you go for something like this, if you go for uh, something with an XLR mic, you're going to have to invest in an interface as well. So the one that I use is the Focusrite. So you can see the XLR is into, into this baby. Um, so there's a little bit of, if, if you do that, if you go down that road, um, you know, the audio is going to be good, but it's a little bit more complex and there's, there's a few more moving parts. Um, than some of the other options. Now the one that I would recommend, oops, it's cut off here. Um, I, then you have like USB mics. So now USB mics you can plug directly into your computer um, and you're able to use those with, with very, very little hassle. Um, and the one that I recommend is the Blue Yeti. I think that most of the, the mics from Blue are, are really good. I've, I've actually had um, a few of them over the years. And um, the, the, it's very convenient because you're just literally plugging in the USB and then it has settings where you can dial down the ambient uh, noise as well. Um, so I highly recommend that one. So if you're just getting started and you're, you're looking for kind of a decent mic, the Blue Yeti, uh, I, I honestly don't think you can go wrong with that mic. It's just, I, I find it to be fantastic. So that's, that's my recommendation. And all of this stuff that I have going on here is a little bit of overkill. Um, but again, it depends on what level you're at and if you want to level up and you want to kind of move forward with that. Okay, uh, next thing to think about is to be aware of your environment and this is really, really important and for many of us, we're at home right now and, and as I say, the kids are home, the wife's home, the husband's home, the girlfriend's home, hopefully not at the same time, oh, I'm joking, couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't avoid making that corny joke. Um, but yeah, like we have all kinds of people in our house, we have loads of things going on and um, you know, we're trying to kind of do everything. So I imagine that everybody's houses are going to be quite busy right now. So um, it's really important if you can to find a uh, quiet place within your house um, or to at least communicate with your family members. Uh, I don't know, but you guys, my little girl goes down for a nap in the afternoon and it's the one or two quiet hours of the whole day. So it's quite a good time to get stuff done. So maybe you want to time it with that or maybe find a, a room in your house, which is going to be the great location to do it in. Obviously, agree with your family members that that's going to be your little live streaming room. And many of you guys will have home offices and places where you are already working out of anyway. So you'll have a, a bit of an idea of, of that place. Um, but I know, again, some of us are on, on roads. Some of us have a lot of different things going on. And you just want to do everything you can to minimize, uh, minimize the noise if you can. Um, because that's going to make a big difference. Because otherwise, you're going to have a lot of echo. And especially in places like in here where we've got, you know, the wooden floor and we've got different things going on. Um, like my, uh, I, I love kind of like minimal design and so there's not like a lot of stuff. So where possible, you might want to bring in some carpets. You might want to, you know, uh, it depends how serious you get with this, right? But um, there are ways to cut it to echo if you find that the location that you, you went for is, is, tends to be kind of noisy. Um, you guys will probably see them. I'm pushing something down here. I just want to show you this. I know Liam has picked one of these up as well. But uh, this, this little thing is called the Stream Deck. So it enables me to kind of move through the presentation on Ecamm. Not a necessity, just a kind of a fun little toy. Um, so it enables me to kind of move uh, from scene to scene and slide to slide and all that sort of stuff. So um, there are lots of other things like that you might uh, want to consider once you start getting into things. Okay, let's skip the head here. Let's jump back in. Okay, third thing is software and just chat to you guys about that a little bit. So as I mentioned, the software I'm using right now is called Ecamm. Really fantastic. You can set up different scenes. You can bring comments on. It's only for Mac, so be interested to know if you guys are a Mac or PC. Just write Mac or PC in the, in the comments here. That would be kind of cool to check out what everybody is uh, using. Um, obviously, you've got free tools like Zoom and Skype and obviously Facebook directly. Um, using something like Ecamm or if you're on a PC, vMix, um, these softwares just enable you to make your, your stream look way, way, way more professional. Um, and uh, obviously, Zoom, Skype and Facebook are completely free. Uh, Ecamm is about $14.99 a month, um, 
and then VMix. I don't know how much VMix is, but uh, yeah, Ecamm is like really. I, I think it's affordable. I think for what you can do is, is really good. Um, and one of the things I like about it, I like how you can like uh, schedule your um, broadcasts and things like that as well, which which makes it a really fantastic tool. Uh, Demo was spelt wrong here. That's kind of webinar software. I was planning to do this webinar on, on Demo tonight, but I, I just you know use Demo earlier on today, and I just love the functionality in, uh, in Ecamm of being able to bring the comments on screen. So that's why I jump back on here as well tonight. Uh, Twitch is um, obviously for gamers, and then Loom. Loom's quite a cool software. One of the people that we work with on our marketing uses Loom quite a bit, and you're able to do a screen recording and send it off, just send a link across rather than sending across a whole video. Uh, but my number one recommendation if you are on Mac is definitely Ecamm. Check it out. Um, I think there might be a free trial. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll put a link to all my gear list under this so you guys can go and check out if you want to have a look at any of that sort of stuff. Um, that's just going to really help you to kind of professionalize a little bit um, what you're doing. Okay, my last and my kind of bonus tip is to keep practicing to improve your confidence. Uh, and obviously a lot of people say to me, oh, I love to do live, but I'm just like, I feel very awkward or I hate the way I look or I do this or I do that. You know, we all feel the same way, every single one of us, and the only way that you get better at this is by doing it again and again and again. Uh, and my tip to you is go and create a private Facebook group, which is only for you, for Facebook testing, and go and test all this stuff, make sure everything's looking good, uh, jump in there and build your confidence, um, and over time you will get better. And uh, that, that's all I can say. All you gotta do, do that private Facebook group, um, and uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, just a little comment on the software. Steam Black says OBS, the one I tried it on Sunday. Steam, I've used OBS as well, and uh, it's it's good. We use it when we did engage. I, I think you can, well, my personal feeling is that you can a little bit more user friendly, um, but again, I think OBS you can use on PC as well, so it depends on what platform you're on, and I think OBS is free, which is a bonus, so some of you guys may not want to spend money right now, and OBS could be um, a good option as well, so thanks for, thanks for mentioning that, Steve. Okay, um, so that is pretty much that. Guys, that's it. I was going to pitch something to you, but I decided earlier on today, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to give you that information. Go and stream, do your thing. I hopefully, hopefully it's useful to you. Hopefully you guys are, um, hopefully you guys can benefit from it. If you enjoyed this, if there was value in it, uh, just leave me a little comment. I've been asked to deliver this for a few different organizations, so um, it's, uh, it's always good to share. It's always good to share. Guys, good luck. Share your streams with me. Let me see your lives. You know, drop me a line. Let me know how you're getting on. And whatever you're up to right now in isolation and self-isolation, um, hopefully you guys are having fun. All right. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. Bye.